They are innocent because you told us that they are. And so, Lord God, we lift up our children before us today, Lord. Lord God, that you would put a hedge of protection around them, Lord. And not just physical ones, but all the things they have to contend with, Father God. Lord Jesus, sometimes they're on the internet, Lord God, and they are exposed to so many things, Lord, and there are no boundaries sometimes to the things that enter into their spirits, Lord. God, sometimes they're under the authority, Lord, of people who are not following you, God, and who take advantage of them because they're young, Lord, and they have no say, Lord. But still they press forward, Lord. God, sometimes they don't have enough to eat, Lord God. But still they press forward, Lord Jesus. Sometimes, God, they're not allowed to go to school and get their education, but God, still they press forward. Lord God, sometimes we make decisions for them, Lord, and we don't listen to what they think or what they have to say. Even though, God, you bless them, Lord, with their own spirit, with their own mind, with their own character, God. Sometimes we shut them down, Lord, and we tell them we don't want to hear. But God, you hear. You understand who they are, who you make them to be. God, in your word, you said, God, that I know you before you were in your mother's womb. And the same rings true for our children. You know them, God. Before they even came to their mother's womb, God, you know their needs, God. You know their heart's desires. You know their strengths and you know their weaknesses, God. And God, you are a provider. We believe for in you for that. Yeah. When we fall short, Lord God, you are there to step in the gap. So we're asking you to stand in the gap for our children, God. Yeah. Where we fall short, God, that you would keep them lifted, God. Yeah. Oh, Lord, that you would be a physical hedge of protection around them, Lord Jesus, as they go to and fro, God, trying to press forward, God. Yeah. Sometimes their breath is greater than ours, God, because they're not seen and they're not heard, and yet they press. They press. So, God, we know you see them. We know you hear them. We know how much you love your children. And so we're praying for them, God, that the greatness that you desire for them, Lord Jesus, will live, will thrive in whatever circumstances there is. And God, then we thank you for the love, Lord. The love that covers our children, Lord. We thank you for those, God, who are pouring out love on our children, God. We thank you for the good things in their lives, God. We thank you, God, for being a provider, Lord Jesus. And we thank you, Lord God, that you see all and that you know all and you hear all, God. And that you acknowledge every thought, every desire that they have. We're lifting up our children before you. Yeah. We're lifting up every child that has lost them, Lord. And they're not sure how to deal with their grief. God, we're lifting them up before you, Lord Jesus. Help them to keep pressing, Lord Jesus. Help them, Lord Jesus, to have joy, Lord, and to spend, to live a life that a child should live, Lord. Help them, Lord, to have good times and joy and happiness in their spirit that they're able to. Pray, God, and be free, Lord Jesus. We thank you, God, that you never change and that you see us all, Lord. We thank you for your love and for your goodness, God. We thank you for your mercy, God. We thank you for just being God all by yourself. Yes, Lord. And we leave our children in your trust and capable hands, Lord God. And we lift all these prayers in Jesus' mighty and matchless name. And let the church say, Amen. Amen. And as we have our community prayer, we want you to just stay with us for a few community announcements. Amen. Because we truly are connected. We are a community. And Pastor Scott would like the community to know that there are that there is help for those who are in danger of becoming homeless or who are already homeless. There's Emergency housing vouchers provided by the Open Housing Authority 
All you have to do is call 211 to see if you qualify to receive housing assistance if it is available for you. The COVID vaccine is so important for us to be vaccinated um, so that we can protect against the uh, COVID virus. And there is a way that a vaccine is available. There are several locations out in the church has vaccinations on Saturday. Friendship Christian Center has vaccinations on Wednesday. The Community Christian Church for Christ has vaccinations available on Thursday. And Greater St. Paul has vaccinations available on Tuesday. These are all locations that Holy Women and the addresses are available. Also, in another community program that's happening is the Community Chaplaincy Program offered by the Ashley of Oakland in partnership with the Oakland Police Department. But under the guidance of the Catholic Republic and President Catholic Civil Society, community volunteers are coming together to learn how to provide services to the community. And classes are every other Tuesday, the next, I'm sorry, Thursday, Thursday Tuesday, and the next class is October 1. And if you're interested in how you can help, you uh, are not able to join the class now, but there is a chance for you to volunteer. And just a reminder that the month of October is the month where we honor our pastors, our leaders, pastors of appreciation for the end of October. And we honor our pastors in time. And for those of you who would like to give honor to those who are honored, our pastor, Reverend Felicia, you can send her a kind word. You can give a love offering. We make a way for that. And just an act of kindness to show our pastor how much we love and appreciate all the work that we do. Because even when we fall off, we come back, they're still here, ready for it. Knowing the word that God is calling them to do. And so we honor our pastor. And um, during our donation time, we will have a, a let you know how you can give if you would like to give a love offering to our pastor in the month of October. Amen. Amen. And uh, we just honor all pastors and all spiritual people who are in the world. And uh, the month of October, our pastor is taking her first medical ever to draw closer to the Lord. It's not time away from the Lord, it's to draw closer to the Lord. And as she draws closer to the Lord, we also want to draw closer to the Lord. And she has uh, given us a spiritual direction on Wednesday's Bible study. We are to study on our own with our family. Maybe even with your neighbor. Invite your neighbor to have a Bible study with you. And this week, the study that Pastor Scott has given us is, comes from the book of Esther. We're in a series of Esther. And we're in chapter 4, verses 1 through 17. And it's the Jews are being correct. And if you have any questions, you can email or text or call the phone number 510-688-7437 or tell the secretary at gmail.com and the ministerial team will answer any questions that you have about the Bible study. Amen. Amen. So we thank God because it's truly a time uh, when he is calling each and every one of us closer to him. And I thank God uh, for the personal, uh, they're not personal, actually, they're family Bible studies that we've been having uh, while Pastor Scott is going to And it's a time when Christ is truly calling each and every one of us to draw closer to him. And so I thank God for this time, for the personal study time, for the family study time, for the growth that each and every one of us, as we all try to draw closer to and now is that time of personal testimony, where if you have a personal testimony, maybe you can do something for yourself, John, question God during this time. You hear his voice. Pastor Scott has preached on conversations with God, hearing his voice. He's truly speaking. He's speaking to his people. We are his sheep. And the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. So if there's anybody with a personal testimony this month, about the, what the Lord is doing in your life. Brother Tim, has a personal testimony this morning. You want to share it with us? Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> so, um, I'd like to uh, read 
my interpretation of the letter of the and I wrote, um, well, I have probably Hear the phrase pride comes come before the fall. But that's also that also applies to our spiritual world. We cannot hear from God when we're walking around as if we know everything in our area. But when we're humble, God can pour into us. This is when we can gain wisdom, knowledge. We're able to hear from the from the Lord clearly. Have you have you ever been in a conversation with someone that thinks they know it all how far you get? It really doesn't. You can't even read it in someone. It's the same way with God. The only difference is you feel it for a sit there and go back and forth. You cannot wait to listen. People just have the young generation they fall back and let, let you fall down. And then then you'll you will wait for you to come back humble and ready to receive the lesson. So um I can personally uh, relate to that because I live my life that way. You know, thinking that I could do it all, thinking that you know, you're you know, 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 then you realize that you can't do that. You have to go to school, you have to go to God, who can help you uh, with whatever is going on in your life. Uh, to receive these messages. So you have to humble yourself. You have to step back. You have to say, okay, Lord, I can't do this on my own because you're going to continue to fall and fall and fall until you go there. We're not going to get it right. You know, some parts in your life may be right. So you so you think of things that you want to do for a while, and all of a sudden it comes that bump, and then you wonder and you look back and like, wow, you know, I've, I've made changes in my life. You just say, why am I here? And then uh, why did this happen? It's because you don't have uh, the Lord leading you or walking side by side. So I can say that, um, and I have a lot to kind of long way to go. I stopped for 20 years, so I got a long way to go. And you're going to continue to learn and receive and hear from God as long as you're humble. And, and it's like um, these are fathers. So they continue to teach as long as you allow them to. Or into you, you have to see So, uh, over these last couple of weeks, a few weeks, I, I've been uh, connecting with them. I, I must truly say that I, I can say that confidently now versus uh, last year that I uh, actually can feel his presence. I can actually uh, hear from him. And it's a good feeling, you know, because you get down sometimes in your life and you know, you have the scriptures to fall back on. And you only uh, get that by reading and studying. You have to, in, in his grace, fall back on and say, yes, it's going to be all right. Yes, it's a bump right now because you have to go through the trial of tribulation um, because life is new. But as long as you continue to uh, stay and lead, uh, things will be a lot better and work out a lot better than you try to do it yourself. And that's not that. I just want to thank God this morning, first of all, this is how we play in the city of South Carolina. I got to work, uh, I mean, I got to work, baby, but you know what? God is amazing, God, and when I can feel the power, I feel that we need to be moved and be perfect, you know, I'm not tired, you know, because I've got a house, you know, and he's letting me know when I'm ready to give me bread, you know, but I just I thank you today for just being, being, uh, just being in God's presence, you know, just study more about my father, you know, uh, I really now try to take time and carve out time. And I just say, just take time to carve out that time just, just for me and my father. I'm going to read, I'm going to study, and I'm going to talk to him. You know, and, and being open and honest with my father, you know, because he, he knows everything, but I'm going to really be open up and try to take the layers little by 
little. Got to get to the rock bottom. So I mean, I'm just blessed to be here today. I'm blessed to, uh, to be in the church with my church family. You know, and just want to just encourage everybody to, to get in your word and really study, you know, because I didn't, I would not say I was always like that, you know, I wouldn't didn't want to study them, but now it, I, I'm in a new direction. I feel renewed and being restrained, you know, and, and when you uh, really study the word, it, and now I'm starting to retain it, not just, not just, you know, just man, but I'm starting to retain it and keep it up here and in my heart because I know that's without that, you know, and so I, I'm just grateful, just grateful to always be in God's presence. <laughs> Amen, amen. Who is who 
are we trying to give out from myself? Am I carrying it? I'm false, or have I given it to someone else? Jesus carried that cross. We don't talk about the cross today. But the cross is the epitome of Christianity. And so Jesus carried that cross and he struggled. And I stayed at the cross this week saying, what does that mean? What does it signify? What does that cross that we wear around our neck symbolize for us? If you really want to know yourself, if you really want to know how to go through your struggle, you need to take a visit to the cross yeah. Yeah. and just sit there. And one of the things that we're going to talk about today, one of the qualities at the cross was mercy. It was yeah. mercy. Yeah. Not mercy given to him. Because he didn't receive mercy. He was slaughtered at the cross. But while he was there, he gave mercy. Yeah. And I said, how many of us give mercy? How many of us carry, do, Lord, do I carry my cross? And in me carrying it as hard as it may be, do I show mercy to others? Because the mercy that the Lord shows, shows us every day yeah. was not dependent upon his circumstance. Yeah. Yeah. The mercy that the Lord shows us every day wasn't dependent on whether God had a good day or not, whether people liked him or not, whether they spit on him or not, beat him or not, put a thorn of a, 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 a crown of thorns on his head. Mercy was who he was. Yeah, yeah. Even in tough times, he reached over mercy. That's one of the things I learned at the cross. I sat there at the cross. I put myself where Jesus was. I didn't wait for Resurrection Sunday. Because the cross, if you wear it around your neck every day, if it's in your heart every day, yeah. if it's in your mind every yeah. day, then it needs to be about who you are every yeah. day. Yeah. God says in Matthew, the fifth chapter, in verse 7, God blesses those who are merciful, for they will be shown mercy. He didn't base it on your circumstances or how terrible it was. It just says, do you have enough to give to somebody else? Yeah. Yeah. And if you don't, go sit at the feet of the cross. And listen to the words that came out of Jesus' mouth. He said, nothing hateful, mean, ugly. He wished no harm on anyone. He didn't hope that they go away and die somewhere. He didn't sit on them as he had been sit on, hit them as he had been hit. What did he do? This son of God, this man who was a man while he was on the cross, that's why he died. <laughs> he showed us I want to talk about mercy today. In this city and in this world, it seems to have no but we offer nothing. Thank mercy is a weakness. The armor to like the truth. Yet we can mercy is a weakness. If you're a man, you're not macho unless you're showing your strength. If you're a woman, you're not a woman unless you can push back and stay there. Can you imagine if Jesus? But he said it here in Matthew 5 and verse 7. God blesses those who are merciful. And they shall be shown mercy when you need it the most. When you need him to understand you. When you need him to be there for you. 
when you've done all the wrong things and then wake up and realize what you've done and say, God, have mercy upon you. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. You want to know who you are, how to heal, how to move forward. I just give you a simple thing. It's not easy for everybody. But let me try to some people can't get to the point. Yeah. Because they're not ready to face Jesus yet. They're not ready to face the suffering Savior. No, not yet. But if you're able to get there, I know you'll find out a little bit more about yourself. You'll find out a little bit more about how much you need to do. And you'll find out a lot about you. Oh, yeah. So that's what I want to say. When my time comes up in a few more minutes, I pray that you're with me and that you're at the cross where you dwell down. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God. Why don't you tell us to this new day in the today? Now is the time for us to be blessed. And I am so blessed by the Lord and His Word and everything He has for us. Yes, Lord. And now is the time for us to give back to the Lord. Yes. Just a little bit of what He has for us. This is an opportunity to be in relationship. And if you're 
absolutely no thing. You want to specify a love offering, you just put love in your note. Everywhere we gave you the gift, just place it to the little note. And you just put love offering. And we know that's what love offering is. Right? Amen. Amen. So, Father God, Lord Jesus, we thank you for every donation, God, every tithe, Lord, everything that you allow us to give on today, God. Because if it wasn't for your grace and for your mercy, God, where would we be, God? But God, you put us in an opportunity, uh, in a place where we can give back, Father God. And for those who wanted to give, Lord, and just didn't have the means to give on today, God, bless the work of your hands, Lord Jesus. Because we can not look for a good news, God. So give them the desires of their heart, Lord, and that they're able to come and give back to you of your word. So, so very easily describe to us, Lord, for how to give and what to do and where to give. So we come to this house, giving gratefully, Lord, and thank you for being God all by yourself. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And now it's time for the reading of the Holy Word. Amen. Amen. Meditation three. Is where uh, Pastor Scott will be delivering the word from on high today in verses 22 through 24. And then, Amen. And if you will, we stand for the reading of the Holy Word out of honor for our Father. And we'll read verses 22 through 24. And then say, Amen. 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 Verses 22. It is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassion fail not. They are new every day. Great is thy faith. Oh, yes, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore, will I hope in him. You may be seated as the Lord as a blessing to the leaders here and doers of this world. Amen. 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 Well, 
And in the midst of his suffering, I mentioned to you the two painful things that were very obvious. The carrying of that heavy cross. Do you know that cross was not the one where you wear on your neck? The cross was made for a tree. Like it was a tree. Can you imagine carrying the weight of a tree on your neck and shoulder? Up a hill, I just need you to go to the cross with me for a minute. I just need you to understand that the journey to the hill was a painful journey. But he had to carry his own cross. How many of us were carrying our own cross? The struggles that we're going through, the hurts that we're going through, the obstacles that we're going through, do we carry it? Or do we whine and moan and complain about how hard it is? How painful it is. He had to be long suffering here. Because it started with the journey up the hill. It started with the beginning up the hill. And the, and the crowd chanting, save yourself if you're the son of God. So we had to be long suffering. And then in the midst of all of that, Suffering and sorrow. In the midst of all of his suffering, he found love. Yes. That's what that the cross is. Yes. Love. Yes. You know the word, you know the story. In his suffering, he found love. He never once was on the cross complaining about what was happening to him. Not once did he profess his innocence. Not once did he say, why are you doing this to me? I came in love. I don't deserve this. He, in the midst of his suffering, had to show He showed love. Yes. Yes. In the midst of this, I know this ain't Easter. We don't talk about cross. We don't talk about the cross until the end of Easter. But I'm just going to break the norm. That's right. Because right. I was there at the cross all week. And I intend to go back. Yeah. Yeah. He had to show love. He showed love in the midst of his struggle. What am I saying? Everybody going through something. Yeah. But is that your cross to bear? Oh. And how do you carry it? Do you take it out on everybody? Do you not like nobody? There's no room for love. Yeah. I need you to come to the cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You may come with back to the back and I'm getting there. Thank you very much. Love. He showed from the cross yeah. in his suffering. He showed love. A lot of us don't want to go to the cross because we don't want to love right now. When we're going through difficult times, we don't want to be reminded of the suffering of Jesus. We don't want to be reminded of how Jesus went through it. We know it in our heart, but we don't want to hear it because our flesh sometimes wants retaliation. Therefore, we have a world that has no mercy because everybody wants to get even with somebody. But Jesus did. Yeah, I'm talking to believers right now. Yeah. You're not a believer. You're not understanding. We already know that. You're not a believer. You're going to put him in the world. He had to show forgiveness. That's the cross. So when I was on my knees and before the Lord in my spirit, I had to ask myself, did you tell me that? He had to be obedient at the cross. I remember he was dying. Yeah. He was suffering. He was in pain. But he's exemplifying all of these characteristics yeah. while yet oh, while yet struggling and suffering. Because he knew that this was his purpose. Yeah. 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 And then he showed mercy. He showed mercy because he did not fall down the angels as he could have to fight his battles for him. He did not ask his father not to forgive them because he said, forgive them, father, for they know not what they do. 
he shows mercy to the people that despise him, to the people who scoffed at him, who betrayed him, and yet he shows seven qualities yeah. of affection shown to those who seemingly did not deserve him. I'm talking to somebody. Why am I speaking about Jesus Christ in a scripture that was given today is in the Old Testament? I'm glad you asked. Because Jesus Christ is noted by his qualities in the Old Testament. He was noted when he allowed the people that had eagerly what it is that you want to draw. Lord God Almighty gave what? I'm going to show it to you, but he shows them what? Mercy. Mercy is shown in the Old Testament. Mercy is shown in the New Testament. The gospel, mercy is shown. The epistle, mercy is shown. In the Revelation time, mercy is shown. No, that's the time we are in the end of days, mercy is shown. And to remind you of the power and the intentional meaning of the cross, we need to take a walk to the cross and understand how mercy has to be given. Because God has given it We've lost sight of what God wants us to do with our faith. We've lost but what how God wants us to carry the cross. We've lost sight and lost direction of what happens when we go through a difficult situation. When we go through a difficult situation, why? If the Lord, if the Lord will allow his son, if the Lord will allow his son to go through a difficult situation, why would he allow you? Because he's going to show you mercy. Lamentation, we find the people that had God's people, God's people, believers that had fallen away from God. So much so that the Lord was sick of them. He was done with them. He said, I'm going to destroy them because I'm, I'm just so tired of their disobedience. In Lamentation, the first chapter. Verse uh, 8 says, Jerusalem has sinned greatly. So she has been tossed away like a filthy wreck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, how, that's how sick of them that the Lord was. Yeah. He tossed them away like a filthy wreck. All oh, who once honored her now despise her. For well, they have seen her stripped naked and humiliated. All she can do is groan and hide her face. That was how the Lord saw his people. A people that had been thrown away like a filthy rag because of their out and out sin, their out and out disobedience. We may ask ourselves, have we ever just pleased God to the point that he wants to throw us away like a filthy rag? That Lord have anything else to do with us in the Old Testament in Lamentations, that's what he was. When we were trying, when they were trying to do what was wrong in Lamentations, the people of Israel found themselves tossed away from God. Look at verse 9. Lamentations 1 and 9. She defiled herself with immorality. Stop right there. We know that's still going on today, don't we? No, we let's just be honest with this. We know that. And gave no thought to her future. Wasn't even thinking about how they're going to make it. Wasn't even thinking about whether they were going to get caught. Wasn't even thinking about the fear would affect God. They were just doing what they wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. It says, now she lies in the gutter for no one to lift her out. Lord, see my misery is the cry. The enemy has punished me. In other words, the people of Israel were in a bad situation yeah. with the Lord. How many of us can say that we are right now and identify with what they were going through. That we ourselves have been in bad situations with the Lord. That we ourselves have conducted ourselves out of the will of God. Now I want to take another step forward. How many of us know people that we are affiliated with that have also fought 
Let me tell you what happens when that happens. Here we are. And when someone else calls, friend, co worker, a neighbor, member of the church, here we are. And here we go. He all of a sudden elevates above us. When we're trying to condemn others, when Jesus was on that cross, he was there and we were here. But while Jesus was on that cross, he did not condemn, he showed mercy. He showed mercy. While we're trying to remain holy, Jesus was holy. Yeah. Yeah. Remember the cross did not come to condemn. For why do we? The cross did not come to condemn. The cross came to save. Yeah. 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 You yeah. 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 Y
Come on, somebody. Didn't God use your pain to bless you? Didn't God do a great way to the feeling? Don't you know you're not going back there because of what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Don't you know that you don't want to have anything to do with where you used to be? Don't you know that you're not going to be used to walk? I ain't used to talk because I'm not going to give you some right. more affliction. Yeah. God didn't give you any of those things that He delivered you from your affliction yeah. because He's a merciful God. Oh, help me, somebody. Y'all need to go to the cross and tell me I can do things I have for it. I said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For your goodness and your mercy is going forever. Every day, you mercy. Yeah. I receive it. Yeah. It's saying it's so many You know what you go. Oh, you know what you go. You know you messed up. Yeah, I know. You know you weren't supposed to. Yeah, I know. You know you said that. Yeah, but why are you still here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you got to go somewhere now. I'll tell you. Yeah. Because God's mercy, even when I was a Christian, He delivered me. Anybody know from right now? You gotta get out of my mind. You gotta get out of my heart. You gotta get out of my soul. You gotta get out of my family. You gotta get out of my heart. You gotta get out of my spirit. God's mercy brings me up this morning. My family, you gotta go. Because I have no hold on you. Hallelujah. Thank you for this mercy. Thank you for his word. Yeah, so the Israelites, God's people, yeah. in their affliction, in their out of sin, when the Lord said they took the right, I'm so sick of them. They began to realize that the enemies were coming against them and winning. Yeah. The enemy can't win against God's people. Yeah. The enemy cannot win against God's people. And as God allows it, God has to say, Go ahead, take them. You you can't kill them. But take them. Because maybe if you take them and shake them up, maybe if they fall and and realize they can't get back up, maybe if you take them to the edge of them, you can take them to the edge of them. You can turn them around. I'm not listening. Turn them around. And I have mercy. Hallelujah, Lord. So come on, turn around. And that's how we were saying. And that's how we were saying. And 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 how we the faithful love of the Lord has never ended. Yeah. He loves us even when we're doing our best. Yeah. He loves us. Yeah. He won't tolerate it, right. but he loves us. Yeah. Right. He won't just totally destroy us, right. but he still loves us. Yeah. And he has his mercy. Yeah. His mercy. Yeah. Even when we may not deserve any mercy. Right. Maybe we don't have no mercy for nobody else. But his mercy yeah. never ceases. As long as you got trust in you, you have an opportunity to what? Seek a new mercy. The scripture says every day, new mercy, I receive. That's right. So long as I can raise my hand, I got you to follow. As long as I can stop and say, I got the goodness of God. And all of the healing has ever been in his mercy. But Lord knows that it's still waiting for me right there. And nobody else is going to need to pass it. Because God has given me mercy to get back up and start all over again. So I say to myself, the Lord is my inheritance. Therefore, I will hope in him. And receive his mercy yeah. after being that dirty rat, yeah. after being so in contention to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Then why can't we yeah. show the same love yeah. and mercy? Yeah. Hallelujah. Because
couldn't be on that cross. That's right. See that tree that Jesus was on? Mm -hmm. It was tall. Yeah. It was a big tree. And he had to look down on the people. Hallelujah. And he really looked down on the people. He didn't see their love. He saw his brother and those his brother and those that even the disciples had, had walked with him, had ran away. And he was left with the hate of the people. The disdain of the people. But what did he do? Jesus showed them love. Jesus showed them compassion. Jesus laid on that cross until it was time for him to go back home to glory. He showed them mercy. So while we're here on this Sunday, Consider it joy yes. to carry your cross. Yes. Yes. And when you pray that you can, I want you to go back to the cross yes. and just sit there. And in your spiritual imagination, mm -hmm. I want you to hear the crowd chanting your name to God. Mm -hmm. I want you to see all the good that you tried to do and see how it's been around and thrown in your face. And then I want you to see Jesus. Yes. And the mercy he showed you. Yes. When you were one of those people yes. that disdain yes. the Lord. Yes. Turn your back on the Lord. And if you can see yourself, then you can have mercy on everybody. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. You can have love for yes, everybody else. Yes. Because Jesus showed it to you. Yes, yes, yes. So remember, I say to myself, Lord, every day that I wake up, new mercy I have received. Yes. No matter how difficult your situation is, new mercy you have received. And because you have received it, the Lord, what is your gift for this? The Lord is my inheritance. Yes. But he has, I shall inherit. Yes. And therefore, I will put my hope in him. Yes. Amen.
I gotta do something different. God's people can't move. Not as worried as some of us.
said, let them sit down in silence beneath the Lord's demand. Let them lie face down in the dust, for there may be the hope and laugh. Let them turn the other cheek to those who strike them and accept the insult of the For no one is abandoned by the Lord. So you may be one today that is there to not receive Jesus Christ into your life. And I'll tell you right now, if you haven't, there is no. Because in Jesus, there is so much abundant life, so much new understanding, so much hope. So much love, mercy. Jesus teaches us how to live. How to live. And not be there. But it's not too late. If you say the prayer of salvation with me today, then you've already started that journey. Hallelujah. You started that journey. So say these words after me, Lord Jesus. I am a sinner. Saved by your grace and mercy. And I believe that you're the Son of God, that you died upon that cross and died for me. Thank you, Lord. I believe, Lord Jesus, that you were buried in a tomb for me. Thank you, Lord. For me. And I believe, Lord God, as it was written in gold on the third day, with all power, all strength for me. And I believe, Lord God, that you ascended into heaven's place. And there you ascended for me. And because I believe, I also believe that you are the Son of God. And in that, I confess that today I am saved. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. Why did I say I'm saved today? Because salvation is daily. Every day you need to take your salvation. You may have slipped and fallen, and you can go to the Lord and recite the Lord's Prayer. I mean, you can recite the Sinner's Prayer. In any way you want, and then receive your repentance. Yeah, we get ready to end it on soon because we're going to have Brother Anthony Hicks come up and lead us in the prayer. But I want to remind you to just hang around the after service and see the announcement in case you did not receive them earlier. There. Very important announcement is if you want more information on Tree of Life or Phyllis Scott's ministry, you can go to Phyllis Scott Ministry at gmail.com and share your comments and information with me, and I'll be glad to respond back to you. And our website, the Tree of Life, is also available as well. Amen. Amen. Let us go to that world of grace and mercy just one more time together. Amen. Amen. Father God, Lord Jesus, we just so thank you. We thank you for the word of God. Thank you, God, that everything you give us to do and work. We thank you. We thank you for the peace of God. We thank you for your son and everything that you did for us. We ask that you help us out to not just receive mercy, but to give mercy. And to show love to Jesus that we can truly truly walk in the Lord in the name of the Lord of the So now unto him who is able to keep us from stumbling and to present us before his glorious presence without fault and with great joy. To the only God our Savior, glory, majesty.